Senator McCarthy was then engaged, didn't you? I certainly did, sir. And that was the investigation of communists and of the infiltration of communists in industry, in every branch of the government, as well as in the army. That was my... Whereas in the present witness, he would like to have the unanimous consent of the committee to comply with the request of counsel to ask Mr. Stevens to step aside so he can put on this other witness and interrupt the testimony of Mr. Stevens. This one. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do, so help you God. You may be seated. Photographers may take their pictures now, and then there will be no more flash bulbs during the testimony. Yeah. <coughs> They're being circulated, Mr. Chairman. And uh, if you have them for the press, they may also be distributed now. Yes. Mr. This committee, and you have my assurance of the fullest cooperation. In order that we may all be quite clear as to just why this hearing has come about, it, it is necessary for me to refer at the outset to Private D. G. David Shine, a former consultant to this committee. David Shine was eligible for the draft. Efforts were made by the chairman of this committee, Senator Joseph R. McCarthy, and the subcommittee's chief counsel, Mr. Roy M. Cohen, to secure a commission for him. Mr. Shine was not qualified, and he was not commissioned. Selective service then drafted him. Subsequent efforts were made to seek preferential treatment for him after he was inducted. Uh, pardon me just a minute. There's something going wrong up in the uh, telegraph. Yeah. This is to Senator Potter's question. The chronology of March 10th discloses what you may find to be substantial and undue efforts on the part of Senator McCarthy and members of his staff to have preferential treatment given to G. David Shine by the Army. The Senator and his staff claim that no such pressure was exerted. They dealt with the matter by making charges against Department of Army personnel and by attempting to draw attention to situations either totally irrelevant or only remotely relevant to the Shine matter. In this statement, I shall deal first with the issue raised by Senator Potter, those pressures which were exerted on the Army on behalf of Shine. Second, I shall comment briefly on other matters raised by Senator McCarthy in this case. Before getting into the Shine story, Mr. Chairman, may I, may I say that regardless of what uh, the, son, the chair and Mr. McClellan decided, when Mr. Stevens says it was my responsibility to speak for the Army, he is not speaking for the Army here. All we have been investigating has been some communists in the army, a very small percentage, uh, I would say much less than 1%. And when the secretary says that, in effect, I am speaking for the army, he is putting the 99 and 9 tenths percent of good, honorable, loyal men in the army in the position of trying to oppose the exposure of communists in the army. I think that it should be made clear at the outset so we didn't waste time on it. Hour after hour that Mr. Stevens is speaking for Mr. Stevens and those who are speaking through him. When Mr. Adams speaks, he's speaking for Mr. Adams and those who are speaking through him and likewise Mr. Hensel. And I may say that I resent very, very much this attempt to connect the great American army with this, this attempt to uh, 
sabotage the efforts of this committee's investigation into communism. I can say, Mr. Chairman, there is nothing in this statement from which an inference can be drawn that the Army has become a party in interest to this controversy. And we are in accord with the Senator that the parties in interest are Mr. Stevens, Mr. Adams, and Mr. Hensel. If that's understood, then I, I have no objection. That is definitely understood, and I think as Secretary for the... may read your statement. Arguments will be made on it at the conclusion of this hearing. I suggest is that in order to conserve time, the Senate, Mr. Stevens proceed with the reading of his statement. Your statement has been ruled in order, Mr. Stevens. You may proceed. You solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. You may be seated. Early Jan January mentioned the possibility of overseas duty for Sean. I now turn to the charges made by Senator McCarthy. One, that I urged the Senator to go after the Navy and the Air Force. And two, that I am guilty of blackmail. I would like first to recall briefly at this point certain events arising out of the General Zwicker incident. On Thursday evening, February 25, I made a public statement from the White House. In that statement, and is needed, I suggest you check with those services. It is a singular thing to me that this serious charge that I tried to persuade the chairman of this committee to investigate the Navy and the Air Force was kept secret so long. Why should it have come only to light four months later on the day after the Army chronology of events became public. Now as to Senator Charges, Senator McCarthy's charge of blackmail. This charge was included in the Senator's memorandum dated December 9th and also made public March 12th. In this case, for more than three months, this most serious charge, that the chairman of this committee had been blackmailed by the Secretary of the Army was kept secret, not only from the public, but from the other members of the committee, as I understand it. I do not know what the senator had in mind when he made this charge, but during the 90 days in which he yeah, kept point it of secret. Order, point, of order. point of order, Mr. Chairman. The uh, secretary and I assume by an honest mistake of whoever wrote this is constantly referring to my being blackmailed. There's never been a charge that I was blackmailed. There was a charge that there was an attempt to blackmail, a very, very unsuccessful attempt. And I think the record should be clear on that at this time. The senator will have a chance in his cross-examination to bring that out, the interviews, Secretary of the Army. Thank you, Mr. I do not know what the senator had in mind when he made this charge. But during the 90 days in which he kept it secret, he continued to make flattering remarks about me in public. On December 16th, Senator McCarthy was quoted description of a blackmailer. The fact remains that this most serious charge is still on the record. I therefore state that it is absolutely false. By way of summary, may I say again that I am proud and morale are priceless commodities in these times and I count it a welcome duty to testify to their soundness here today. The Shine case is only an example of the wrongful seeking of privilege, of the perversion of power. It has been a distraction that has kept many men from the performance of tasks far more important to the welfare of this country than the convenience of a single army private. In conclusion, I want to make it clear that the United States Army does not Coddle communists. This committee knows that. The American people know that. I share the view.